Hello, and welcome to the first of a three-part webinar series. Today, we will be exploring the future of facade design. From undulating forms to breathable qualities and sustainable fabrication, the future of facade design is an ever-evolving topic in architecture. Design Boom and Arc Daily have teamed up to discuss the future of cladding, including the digital and sustainable fabrication of facade panels together with Corian Design. Corian Design, a business of DuPont, is a leading surface manufacturer and service provider who aids architects and designers in realizing creative visions, much more than solely exterior cladding. As such, Design Boom and Arc Daily are set to moderate and broadcast an exclusive yet free three-part webinar series with Corian Design. Today, in our first of the series, this webinar, this webinar aims to explore the future of cladding. Welcome everyone, and thanks for joining from all corners of the globe. My name is Kat Barandy, Design Boom Senior Architecture Editor, um, based in New York City, and I will be the moderator of our conversation today. I'm joined by a panel of creative experts from international acclaimed architecture practices. Filippo Innocenti, Director at Zaha Hadid Architects, Marie Lucas, Partner at M3 Architects, and Sanya Kovacheva, architect at STAR. Each expert will not only add their and their practices voice to the future possibilities of facade design, but also add shape in the form of realized case studies made possible with the aid of Corian design. We are also connected together by Paco Ledesma, technical specialist at Corian Design, who will give further insights into their product and services that have and will enable creatives to shape this future. Before handing over to Paco, I'd like to remind our live viewers to add questions for our experts in the Q&A section in the toolbar below. Uh, we'll answer a selection at the end of the conversation. Paco. Thank you, Kat. And hello, everybody from Barcelona, Spain. Uh, my turn now to introduce a little bit Korean to all of you. You probably all know Korean, but I'm going to spend like three, four minutes, just explaining a little bit of the basics. Uh, Korean solid surface was invented back in 1967. It was the first ever solid surface material. Korean is a composite material made with acrylic resin, aluminum trihydrate, and pigment. It's a solid product. All through the thickness, it's non-porous, has the same color, is the clean, low VOC, resistant and durable, and can be fabricated pretty easily with um, seamlessly and thermoformed. For more than 50 years now, Korean solid surface has been trusted by thousands of new architects around the globe uh, because of its unique features and aesthetics to take design into unique native directions. Putting together high performance, beauty, uh, providing new solutions to commercial spaces like in healthcare sector, hospitality, retail, and also into residential spaces like kitchen and bathroom, mainly. Because Korean uh, is non-porous, it's seamless and low VOC, it helps taking care of what's more precious to us, what's more important to us in reality. It's our health and where we live, the environment. Just an example in these recent COVID times where clean and healthy surfaces were key. We could show that the material combined with regular cleaning and disinfection was probably one of the best ways to eliminate traces of virus and bacteria from any surfaces uh, that you would touch. On the environmental side, our materials are designed to be durable and sustainable. Uh, it's very, very durable, so a longer inherent value in, is key in circular economy. And their accordion uh, solid surface enables to repair, to be repaired, to be reused, to be upgraded, and to be refurbished. So it's designed to maintain operational utility much longer than many products. Korean Design delivers superior finished products through a network of highly skilled fabricators, certified and trained by us. Uh, the support of its internal technical experts and also a 10-year limited warranty. The technical team of which I'm, I am part of can provide support to fabricators, to architects, 
project, project managers, et cetera, at any stage of the project. Now, talking about the topic of this webinar, you know that Korean solid surface, as it was mentioned, it's also used for facades. We'll see some examples right on right now. Because of its intrinsic material characteristics, Korean allows to make a statement in your projects by creating unique, long-lasting facades. And when we say long-lasting, we really mean it. Just to give you an idea, the first examples of external cladding with Korean date back from 1987 in the UK. Korean makes it possible to create two or three dimensionally formed facade sections to achieve complex geometries with one of the biggest seamless panel sizes in the world and allows also to express your creativity. No limits, that's what we say, and we try to really keep stick to that. Exterior clouding solutions with Corian that can last a lifetime thanks to its high performance, durability, excellent UV resistance and weather resistance also, easy maintenance and repairability with a reliable structural performance and a certified fire rating of the material. This was a short introduction of Korean, and now I hand it back to Kat, who will introduce you to the rest of the panelists. Thank you. Now we'll explore a selection of facade projects by our guest speakers together with Korean design. This includes the idea behind each project, why Korean has been used, and what features and benefits of the material are most important. So I'll share screen and beginning with Filippo. Thanks, Kat. Good afternoon, yeah. everyone. Thanks for joining the webinar. I'm Filippo Nocenti, I'm director of Zahadids. I've been working with Zahadid Architects since 2002. And um, I started working mainly in the cultural field, but then evolving into transportation with the design of a number of stations uh, and airports. And uh, lately more and more interested into how to shape the public space and how this could affect the transformation of our cities. The project you're seeing here is one of our most important this uh, follows the competition that we've done back in 2003 is the high speed train station of Naples in Italy, one of the stations along uh, the Italian network that connects the north to the south, and in particular, the north that's uh, uh, from where the line departs towards the southeast of the country. Um, when I started doing this project, I, I had joined the office for about one and a half year. And um, the next one, please. Uh, at the time, so yes, thank you. At the time, the office was pretty much busy. Our agenda was all busy with exploration of uh, complex form and we were looking at alternative way of um, design a facade that could be in a way uh, on the same time competitive, but alternative to more established traditional um, form of the modernist architecture. And in particular, we were looking at how to make use of the available construction technology at the time to build facade that could be curved in, uh, in many different complex forms. Of course, we were limiting our, uh, let's say, catalog of uh, panels and shapes to what was uh, available at the time. And so we were restricting to either planar surfaces with either simple or complex shape or a portion of a simple repeatable geometry like cylinders and cones. And so we were venturing for the first time with this project into the exploration of the first uh, um, surfaces in torsion. Uh, next slide, please. So this experience was coming from a couple of projects we've done before than this. And in particular, the Landesgartenschau, with designs in Wallenrhein, Germany, and the Museum of Contemporary Arts in Rome. 
But um, what we were exploring here with the station in Naples was uh, the first opportunity to uh, create and build double curvature panels that uh, would allow uh, torsion in the facade. So this was one of the typical uh, tools that we would have used at the time to catalog and classify all the different shapes of the panel in order to uh, keep track of the complexity of the facade and on the same time uh, maintain it within the expected uh, construction budget. So at the time we were desperately looking for a material that could have served the purpose of being easily uh, cut, easily transported and installed, but on the same time uh, allowing for uh, curvature and uh, to be bent into shape. So when we, for the first time, explored the opportunity that Corian was uh, um, promising for the external facade, we were very, very interested. And I believe we've been one of the first office who's, who have uh, um, attempted to take advantage of these uh, unique characteristics. The next one, please. Well, and just so you know, it's five minutes, not 10 minutes. Yeah, yeah, no problem. I'll, I'll be very quick. <laughs> so this is the project. As you can see, it sits on the outskirts of the city of Naples and uh, is, um, is a cross station. And it's being conceived as a bridge over the railway line with the idea of resolving the issue of the barrier that the infrastructure creates within the territory. Um, the concept of the station is to bring the passenger center right on the top of the of the platforms, with the advantage of being uh, in the ideal position to distribute the people towards the platform and to let them interchange within the different uh, uh, hub. Now, the advantage of uh, a, a bridge that is conceived as a I'm sorry, the station that is considered as a bridge is that you can orient the main body of the station with the ideal position with respect to the sun. So the next one, please. This has been one of our first um, sustainable building. At the time, we were very, very um, keen on establishing the first bioclimatic principle and trying to reduce the amount of energy um, used in the building with the, the solar exposure, with the control of the solar exposure, which is particularly important at this latitude where the building is exposed to a significant amount of uh, solar energy for a considerable part of the year. Um, the next one, please. So, this is one of the image of the interiors of the building, which is conceived as uh, an overall atrium that um, organizes the passenger center right on top of the platforms. And uh, of course, the control of the energy intake through the main uh, glaze uh, roof is one of the most significant aspects of the project. As you can see here, the, the, the shape of the roof is such that is orienting a number of um, um, sides towards the north. So regardless of the distribution of these panels, uh, glazed panels along the roof, it always allows the, the best intake of solar and the minimal intake of solar energy and the maximum amounts of natural illumination. The next one, please. Just a reminder, you've had about five minutes now, so. Yeah. So, well, this is one of the image of the Southwest entrance. We can see here uh, how the Korean panels have been um, extremely helpful in resolving the problem of the outer uh, envelope of the building, allowing us to um, follow the curve of the of the overall geometry of the external volumes. And the next one, 
on the same time having uh, both uh, um, a number of complex shaped uh, panels, but also bent into single curvature elements. The next one. Or like in the case of the east entrance, how to, to be properly bent over the curvature of the main steel structure. And uh, the last one. And uh, again, another image uh, that is showing how flexible is the use uh, of this material when it comes into uh, allowing the definition of uh, very sharp and on the same time um, curved elements that might, might be needed. Um, one of the great advantage of the material we found is the opportunity to be cut and uh, treated as uh, in a very similar way to wood panels. So with a very basic kind of technology, it can be assembled, glued together. The perfect continuity between two panels can be perfectly reestablished. And on the same time, it can be bent at very low temperature without the needs of a counter form. It can just be heated up and then let it uh, adapt to one single mold on a, on a single surface, for instance, without the need of a complex uh, mold. So these are all characteristics that have been, uh, that reveal being extremely helpful in the management of the construction of this envelope that could be controlled directly on site with minimal um, um, investments into specific uh, um, technology. And this is pre pretty much it. I'd be happy to, to respond to any query should be posted. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. Um, next, Marie. Hi. I saw directly, so I gained some time. <laughs> so, um, thank you for the invitation to present uh, in, in behalf of my firm. Uh, this uh, small building, in a way, but uh, we like so much. Um, the project we present today is uh, the Hotel Mama Shelter. Uh, it's uh, located in the very heart of uh, the so-called European district in Luxembourg. And so it's surrounded by many office buildings. Uh, in the background, you see the towers of the European Court of Justice. Um, my goal was to give the facade a visual differentiation from the urban context and to make it really look different and, uh, and clearly distinct, distinguish the function of an hotel and its life inside. Uh, from the office uh, life. And you see in the back, uh, the other building we, we built on the same side uh, with a black facade in contrast in the back. Uh, the, and I see that the surface mentioned uh, for the project is uh, the whole uh, mixed use program on this side. Next. So you see both buildings um, are linked uh, by a public square and a street on the other side and an underground parking lot. The hotel um, is, um, has five floors of identical rooms. Next. You see, this is a very typical hotel plan. Uh, Mama Shelter is uh, a new brand uh, issued by Trigano, and but it's the rooms are quite small. Um, it is mainly aimed at uh, young urbanites uh, who prefer to spend more time in the public rooms on the ground floor, the restaurants, and also a big uh, uh, co-working uh, space in the basement. So with this very uh, strong rhythm and with this repetition. Uh, we decided uh, to play 
and to make something playful out of this repetition. So, um, and there was also another reason because uh, those small rooms are also quite comfortable. Uh, next. And to illustrate this, this was the first logo of Mama Shelter uh, Hotel, um, how do you say that, Shen? And um, it expressed also something from comfort and, uh, and care. And we used a, a, a lot uh, the idea of the feathers to convince our client uh, on the facade. It was a big like a storytelling about additioning elements, uh, comfortable elements and feathers. So um, to escape monotony, we decided to articulate these elements of the facade. Next. And, um, and Corian uh, was, had many arguments to, we tried some other uh, materials. We analyzed uh, um, concrete light, light elements and uh, aluminum. And we made the decision for Corian because of, uh, yes, all the arguments who were used and, and uh, mentioned by my colleagues before. And um, one of them, uh, is uh, you see, I think, in the next picture. Next. So, no, I think you have to go back. One more. I completely disappeared. Okay. So this is uh, this is why uh, the material offers with because it's so thin. Uh, it was perfect to to have more space. Um, to, for the thermic insulation so that we could uh, uh, comply with the uh, regulations, the legal re uh, things in Luxembourg about the energy perf performance of the building. Um, this, um, the other argument was that um, we were convinced by the possibility to use uh, two panels assembled and to get this height, and uh, the, the panels are about uh, four meters height and 240 uh, in the, the other size. And uh, you, you never see the, it, it's seamless. So we were happy to have this uh, neutral material. And um, the, the way we studied the under construction um, was uh, really efficient work with a contractor who came with uh, proposals of uh, always uh, using um, simple and um, efficient um, solutions. Next. So the result is for us uh, something uh, uh, from the geometry we really like to work with strong geometry in our office, but also to, to mix it with a playful um, uh, architectural uh, treatment. So um, I think uh, we create with this strong design, it it's, uh, all, also speaks about articulation and joy in, in the design. Next. And just a reminder, you've reached about five minutes. Yes, it's just one picture still. Evoking shingles, Pakoraban dresses, and the next one. And this is uh, the playful end on the rooftop. I'm done. Thank you. Um, Sonia. Hello, thank you, Kat. Uh, my name is Sonia Kovacheva. I'm part of uh, Star Studio. Um, since 2019, um, and I'm part of the um, creative department as an architect, and I will present to you Warner Wave project. This is a residential building, and Warner Wave um, is a special project for us. It is located in Varna on the Black, uh, it's, a, it's like the Black Sea capital, as we call it. Uh, Varna is the second largest city in the country. 
And Barney Wave is also the building where our main studio is located at, and I'm currently right here. Um, this is our first building with solid surface material and Corian in particular. We knew about the material uh, for quite some time back then, um, and we were searching for suitable project in order to try it and to experiment with it. In 2014, when the investor came to us, um, uh, when the investor Varna Wave came to us, uh, they already had in their mind this name Varna Wave uh, as a name of the building. And they were also quite uh, forward thinking. So we knew right away that Corian is the right material for this project. Um, at the time, no one ever used it as a facade cladding material in the country. And um, our information was from the local representative of Dupont, Mr. Alexander Banchev, that it was never used even on the Balkans until this point. So we traveled to Wroclaw in Poland after he invited us in order to see two local projects in order to understand how the material is implemented and how um, it's behaving. Um, next. With Varna Wave, we were uh, brave, but a bit cautious in design. The only bending that we used is at the corner of the building and along the railings uh, using just a single axis. Um, after the completion of the building, uh, we have received quite positive feedback from the builders who have worked on the facade installation and how easy it was to work with Corian. Um, and now, almost five years after it got completed, um, we were quite happy and content with the, with the actual result and how the material is behaving and still how good it's looking. Um, next. On the next slide, there's just one more picture of Arno Wave. Yeah. I think that, um, that yeah, might be it's okay. Continue. Um, and since we're so happy with it still after five years, uh, from every tiny street you see it hundreds of meters away, it pops out something peculiar you want to see closer. Um, there was even one person living across the building just in front that even thanked us because um, Thank, thanks to Korean, um, not only they see something refined from the window, but um, now their living room is much more brighter than before, thanks to the reflected light. Um, and you can go on the next. After uh, Varna Wave, we have used solid surface material for another two projects. Um, this is BGA corporate building and B73 apartments. With B73 apartments, now you see it on the pictures, we were much more um, confident and freer in a sense of uh, experimenting in shape and design. This is also a residential building. Um, and now you, we are using more complex details and using, you can go on the next couple of next slides. Um, and we were using now three different accesses of bending. It got completed in 2021, and we hope that we will have even more opportunities to use Corian in future in much more exciting projects like this ones. This is from me, and thank you. You thank can you. go from other final images if you want. Yeah. Sure. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, so let's discuss the future of facade design. Um, what does it mean for you all? Um, how are future technological changes impacting your work? So if someone would like to um, just comment on um, any digital fabrication methods or perhaps parametric design these sort of digital advances, uh, how is this affecting your work? Well, yes, I, I can start sharing my thoughts. Um, I mean, the, the building that I show has been one of our first attempts to, to venture into complex geometry. 
And uh, since then, it was 2003 when we initially did the competition, the construction technology has uh, evolved significantly. And also the overall imagery of, um, of the architectural form has uh, in a way departed from, um, let's say, more traditional modernist shapes. And so this is given us at the at the moment uh, um, a considerable freedom of um, of uh, choosing the best expression for our architecture, but on the same time, maybe to reconsider and go back to more suitable, well tested, and uh, uh, reliable uh, systems. Right as a, as a result of our exploration. And uh, well, I have to I have to say that um, in the case of the use of Corian, for instance, it has been extremely positive for us to rely on the opportunity of the material. And there's uh, more and more complexity ahead uh, of us as designer with respect to the choice of a truly sustainable material, a truly sustainable technology. Um, the technological system that might allow the best control over issues related to, to fire and, and safety and all these things. So it is really, I mean, at, at least to us, quite reassuring to have the support of uh, of um, important manufacturer that can, uh, let's say, activate a serious campaign of testing and really invests into, into innovative solution. Uh, Marie, do you have anything to add? Um, we work in a very, um, in a historical center, so, uh, our contribution to the continuity of urban concepts uh, don't allow us uh, to put some, some um, imaginative uh, station like you presented uh, on. We, we, we love to work on um, smaller objects. When it goes to parametrical design, we made now a pavilion uh, for, for uh, for a city in the south, with the with the, the whole design, uh, co the computer, uh, the computer, um, yes, uh, in, in many, but it's a smaller object. Now, I I would like to say that I totally agree with um, with Filippo, uh, saying that our main efforts in the next years are going to choose for every um, for every project the right material at the right place with a the combination of uh, some um, sober uh, use of uh, energy materials and uh, yes, and uh, a certain uh, local experience. And I think uh, this is also what I so much appreciate. It's the cooperation with local um, knowledge and uh, and this simplicity of uh, of the the this. Um, it's like be bespoke joinery. The material can be worked very uh, simply, makes that we will mostly use it the next years. Perhaps, yes, bent in one direction, but in designs uh, which still are consistent with our uh, former production and what the public and the society can accept. Sonia? Yes, well, when we speak about future of uh, cladding material, future of um, facade fabrication and facade cladding, um, what is exciting for us here in the studio lately and what is making its way to the architectural and digital design um, is becoming the artificial intelligence and generating images quite quickly and easily. And if for some quite some time back then, a couple of years ago, if we see some remixing of uh, already known shapes, volumes, and styles, 
um, now with this um, artificial intelligence, as if a new open, a new door of possibilities is opening, which raises a lot of questions, a lot of issues uh, that uh, will need to be answered in future or in the present, probably most probably. But uh, the positive side for the architecture um, is that um, even if now the image imagination of architects it's even more um, enriched um, it, it's going to be curious how the production industry of material production and um, facade clouding technologies innovation will somehow respond to this demand and maybe catch up with the um, new way of uh, creating design between architects and ai um. Thank you so much for all of your comments. Um, unless any of you want to add more, um, we might move on to the next topic. And just a reminder to all of our listeners uh, to include comments in the Q&A section if you have anything you'd like to ask the panelists. Um, so there are certainly challenges in the implementation of facade projects with three-dimensional shapes, non-repetitive panels, complex geometries. Uh, would any of you like to explore these challenges and your approaches. Um, Filippo, why don't you begin again? Uh, yes. Sorry, the, the, the question is, is exactly? Yes, um, so the challenges of implementing uh, complex facade designs with non-repetitive panels perhaps, yeah. or um, three-dimensional shapes. Yeah, yeah, okay, so. Yeah, I mean, of course. Um, I think I've mentioned this uh, within my presentation. At the beginning, uh, construction technology available for the production of facade was very limited, right? Because then the, the opportunity to, to, to bend in single curvature, not to say double cur curvature or torsion a, a panel were extremely limited because just th there was not uh, there was not demand for this complexity. We had the incredible case when we did the, the bridge for the Saragossa exhibition in 2008, this incredible experience of working uh, together with the uh, naval uh, manufacturer who was producing um, steel sheets of uh, in significant thickness, the same that would have been used for the hulls of the, of the ships. And they had in-house the, the technology necessary to bend these like 80 millimeter thick panels into any shape, right? Because that technology was serving the purpose of uh, producing ships, uh, hulls, and therefore was already there. But because of the demand limited at the time in the facade uh, industry, um, a very simple um, two curvature bending of a, of a facade panel wasn't available. So uh, it is quite reassuring seeing that uh, um, in, the, in the last years, significant improvements has uh, has uh, uh, in a way come into the industry and now the opportunity available are much much more um, but as i was saying yes now we definitely have to include in our agenda a number of other important aspects that are still waiting to be resolved Uh, Marie, uh, would you like to continue? Oh, not really, because it's a little bit redundant with uh, what I've said before, because and we haven't had the opportunity to experience uh, this, this uh, three-dimensional three forming of uh, these elements just on smaller design objects. I think, uh, and I don't feel frustrated in any, in any way for that, because uh, Korean uh, gives us gave us uh, fantastic opportunities in uh, uh, in kitchens and to to make crazy things. But uh, I think uh, let's see what happens in the next years. 
let me discover and i know i would get some support from you sure uh sonia well with with our experience um with uh, three projects using solid surface material and um, I can say that we are quite happy and maybe lucky to um, put into a realization two residential projects that are using Korean uh, surf, um, solid surface material because somehow in the context that we are, um, it's not that easy to introduce an innovative and uh, the innovative material with higher cost. Um, so we are quite lucky with um, uh, responding to this challenge. Um, in a sense of uh, technical challenges, um, I can say that in, in Bulgaria, it's uh, the, the production of the material and also distribution, is, uh, the distribution of the material is really high level. Maybe what um, could be more needed is enough companies that have the skills and the expertise to actually make the facade installation and, and, um, and cladding. Uh, but that, that comes with having more and more projects in future. So hopefully um, this will change for everybody, not just for us. Uh, thank you for those thoughts, um, all of you. And Paco, uh, we're going to turn to you. Um, you have some solutions that you'd like to discuss. Yeah, uh, actually, as a, as a producer of a material, um, interested in, in the quality implementation of the material actually we um, we always try to to get along with you get along with technology with what you do not only the shapes not only uh, what i said earlier about um we providing a material uh, which gives you a lot of freedom in terms of creativity okay but then we need to make it happen right i mean how many times have you been told, you guys, or anyone uh, attending the meeting, hey, this is okay on paper, but how do I really make it, right? Like uh, the guy that has to make it, how do we really make it? Well, we are also interested into that. That's why we put limits. We know the limits of the material, so that's why we say from time to time, hey, sorry, this might not be the right call, this might not be the right choice. Uh, with Korean, though, we try to always follow with 57-year-old material, okay, in hand. We need to stay up to date. And what we need to do is follow what you, what you guys do, okay? Uh, you have an enormous amount of tools which allow you to create unique buildings, okay? It's probably very difficult because we are in the initial phases of parametric design, well, initial. I mean, I think it's, there's still a lot of room um, to, to expand parametrical design and, and computer design. Um, well, we wanted, we had this feeling we needed to do something um, to help you realize what you had in mind. So we have developed a, what we call a 3D fabrication solution, a Korean 3D fabrication solution, which is a solution that allows us to um, go from your design to the panel in one step. So your 3D design in a computer passes into or becomes a real panel in just half an hour, 45 minutes, okay? You probably know the process of bending Korean. Bending Korean or thermoforming Korean as we call it means <coughs> material app and then using a mold, okay, uh, fixing it into, onto a mold until it cools down to room temperature. Then of course, you have to trim it to size in order to have the right shape, right? Well, that's not easy and it was not very easy. It's time consuming. It's uh, very difficult because it, I mean, just look at just an image, okay? We did develop this system to do things like what you see on the image. This was the uh, first, um, the proof of, con of concept actually. We developed all of this solution and this is the first proof of concept. It's 35 square meters, 64 panels. All panels are different. There's not a single panel which is identical to the other one, okay? 
So remember when we um, uh, used to tell you in the past, like, hey, when we thermoform, we need to try to reduce the amount of different shapes uh, so that we can do things on time and uh, things can stay within budget, right? Well, with this technology, we can do single shape, uh, unique shapes for every single panel, okay? The only thing we need to take into account is that it fits into the shape of the sheet. Or there are some limitations in terms of heights and, and angles and, and radiuses. Uh, but besides that, once you get your drawing, once uh, you have the drawing, 3D drawing, we can bounce it straight away, fully digitally, by the way, we can bounce it uh, directly into an adaptive mold, okay? Which would reconfigure to the shape, we would thermoform the piece on top of it. Then we would have a post trimming system that would trim the piece to, to size, and we will have a finished product. No molds produced. That means a lot of uh, savings, um, environmental savings even, because most of the molds we would produce in order to produce these kind of shapes would be made with wood. Okay. Just to give you an idea, barely for this project, we calculated that if we had to make the same project, same shapes with wooden molds, uh, we would use, would have used a bit more than 100 kilos of wood per square meter just for this project, okay? So can you imagine the savings? It's also much faster, as you can imagine. We don't need to produce the molds, so it's much faster also. It could be up to 40% cheaper, end of the day, versus a traditional, um, let's say, fabrication method, okay? So with that, we think we have a very valid solution uh, I, I'm saying we have, because it's going to be available for all of you to use from October. End of October, more or less, that will be available for all of you. It is a technology um, that maybe, Filippo, if we have had this technology <laughs> back in the days where you were working on the project uh, of the Afragola station, uh, well, Th those those uh, sentences we repeated back then, like, hey, try to repeat the same shape so we, so we can control the budget and things like that, we would have had said that, okay? Yeah. Paco, yes. I mean, absolutely. I've seen this system uh, at Rebuild in Madrid um, in the spring. And uh, I was really, really excited. It was... Um, Kind, I was kind of emotional actually because I remember when we were doing the testing for the fire safety and the structural uh, strength of the material together with the Korean technical office, I was discussing with Eddie Vershuren about uh, the opportunity of, of uh, um, studying a system of molds that could be reconfigurable based on uh, on pins or pistons and uh, adjustable element that would uh, uh, be digitally controlled and allow all the possible double curvature shape. And at the time, it was more than 10 years ago, that was just a project. And then, yeah, you, you, you made it, <laughs> you realized it. And uh, this is incredible because uh, this would have saved us a lot, a lot of uh, concerns. I remember I was literally terrified when uh, I was uh, basically one of the very first uh, designer with our office that was attempting to realize something uh, in, in Korean without uh, the, um, the reassurance coming from the contractor industry that those systems were possible. So if I had seen this, this particular system of molding the, the panels, I would have been definitely, definitely much, uh, much more relaxed. For instance, I, I, I can see that those elements of Sanya's uh, projects in double curvature I've seen something in black around the openings w would have been extremely uh, easily to to fabricate with this uh, with this system, and uh, yeah, 
at, at the touch of, uh, at the click of the mouse, basically you could reconfigure the molds and produce all the double curvature that you want. So yeah, well done, fantastic. Yeah, looking forward to, to use it. Thank you, thank you, Filippo, for, oh, sorry, sorry to interrupt, but, but I just wanted to say that, of course, this is not only for external cladings, this can be also used for the internal cladings, or even for a singular object that you want, that you may want to produce, okay? Um, it's not only for, this is for the material, this is not only for uh, one particular application. Uh, so could you describe this first case study of this new technology available in October? Yeah, we, we well, this, this is the, what you see on the screen. It's literally the, the proof of concept. I mean, we really wanted to test if this was feasible, what we had in mind and what we had tested, like bits were positive on one side, some detached parts on the other side were also possible. Uh, we tried to put it together and this is where we discovered that it worked. As com well, it confirmed it did work, okay? Uh, but basically how it works is, as I said earlier, uh, the architect uh, made the 3D design. Um, we had different meetings with, uh, with the architect to, to let them know with the architect studio, uh, to let them know what the limitations of the system is. Okay, well, well sorry, where? Um, in terms of the size of panel, because you see there, the size of the panel is pretty small because we had a, a small test unit, okay? So we did not, we cannot go really big. Now we can go full scale. Full scale means panels of 300, uh, 3 meters 65 times 1 meter 50. So that's pretty big. Imagine those panels that you see in there, the curved panels you see on the right part of the image, they are uh, approximately 90 times 55, more or less. So we, have done, we could have done the same project instead of with 64 panels, could have done this project with 10 panels only. Imagine the savings in terms of structure, in terms of installation, in terms of fabrication also, because it takes the same time to make a small panel and making a bigger panel, more or less the same time. There's a very little difference. And the, if you go to previous pictures, you will see that we display Corian in a very standard way, like flat, okay, as a, um, a, a, as a contrast on the new, um, the new fabrication methods that we can use. I mean, 10 years ago, probably, Filippo, it was like very unlikely to, to have something like that. There was some bits of technology here and there, and putting that together uh, meant a big effort from uh, from our technical team. Um, it's we did not do that in the last six months. Okay, <laughs> took a while. <laughs> took a long yeah. while to do it, especially because we wanted to do something really easy, really easy, so that what you design is what happened at the end. Yeah. Okay, I, I, I don't know, I know very little about 3D design. I can do these panels. If you do the designs for me, you know. <laughs> Good. Good, um, so unless any of the other panelists have any other thoughts, um, we can move into the Q&A portion. Um, yeah, I, I have a comment. Um, this seems like a really, really impressive uh, new technology. And uh, regarding with what I was just saying before, uh, this seems like really uh, good timing because now with new possibilities of ideas, shapes and design and imagination through different uh, instruments like AI, now the construction industry and the facade material uh, construction industry answers to this demand. So it joins really well together, um, having more unique 
shapes of panels and um, having less uh, wood waste, being more cost effective. So this sounds really great. So I hope we will have a chance to, to use this technology in the future. Well, if you want to explore this, this new solution, okay, should you have any project that yeah. is suitable for this or uh, this, this solution, this, this fabrication solution is suitable for the project, hey, contact us and uh, we'll analyze it with you. We'll have a look at it together with you and we'll see whether it makes sense for you and if it's, if it's okay. We'll try to find a project then. Well, yes, we, are, we, are have to, we are here to help you. Okay, this is our job. Question. Yep. Um, what is behind the panels? Do, do you also fabricate with the 3D design uh, the, the supports? Uh, if you are, is it, uh, has it been a very exceptional facade? And it doesn't matter what is behind this molding. Uh, how is but it, it, it is important because at the end, uh, uh, a facade has to withstand winds and, and, and movements of the buildings, et cetera. It has to comply with the building, with the building codes, anywhere you put that building, right? So behind that, there is a, a grid, uh, a structure, a grid structure, very similar to the one you showed on your project, okay? Uh, the, the, difference, the only difference is that it adapts to different shapes of the panel shapes and angles of the panels, okay? But yeah, structural stability is of utmost importance. It's not just about uh, putting a, a, a sheet of Korean uh, shaped in a way. Uh, no, uh, we need to put that there also. We don't do that. We, we, we know about Korean, uh, we are, uh, we can help you with Korean. We know companies and we can help contractors um, to, to get in touch with companies that can uh, do actually the, the, um, all the background structure, all the supporting structure. Okay. Of course, with the building, uh, with the 3D drawing that you will supply, okay, that you will make, in reality, you have most of the job done already. Yes, <laughs> it should be already done. <laughs> yeah. The advantage of the... Uh, uh, of modern tools, uh, or let's say the actual tools you use for designing, it means fabrication. It makes fabrication easier in reality. Very That's often, true. we work also like everybody like, like now with beam and and everything uh, uh, exists very early in the concept phase in three Ds with the and with simulations and it develops uh, uh, lots of possibilities, but. Uh, um, the addition of, um, of complexity between the inside and the outside and all those um, different things inside the facade is something which is causing, for the time being, huge costs in, um, in the this frames and supporting things. So I'm sorry to bring such uh, a trivial aspect of, the, of things because uh, we, we are all thrilled by, by the possibilities, but uh, still we have to, we have to uh, be aware of uh, the addition of uh, um, kush, what's a kush, a sheet? Um, um, no, a, a layer. Layer, yes. In, in, in reality, uh, the, the, the work, the main work of the technical team at, at DuPont, okay, is to say no. <laughs> yeah, we are the guys that say, uh, sorry, but what you have in mind, it's not possible because we need, you need to take into account these and these and these, and that would make a safe installation or it, it would make in a way that it will comply with building codes, etc. So we are the no guys, yeah. <laughs> so let's meet uh, sometime. Yeah, yeah. We, we, again, we are very pleased to help you in any design uh, you have in mind, or any project you have in mind, bring us in anytime you want. I mean, the, the earlier, the better, okay? So we can help you. I mean, very often it's just a matter of adjusting the size panel to change dramatically the price, okay? Because you can reduce dramatically the, the fabrication time but just reducing a few centimeters the size of a panel, okay? 
So we are there even for that. Okay. Right. Um, so let's move on to the Q and A section. Um, uh, we have a question here for Sonia. Um, okay. Says, for example, how do you, as a practice, use technology as an enabler to realize your own style, beauty, and philosophy? Um, well, we, as a technology, um, for us, it's very helpful, um, all the building softwares that we use. And for example, with B73 apartments, in order to achieve this more, um, for us at the time, more bold shape and, and complex bending, we were trying a couple of, a couple of different softwares in order to achieve this uh, shape. And we put it uh, at a test a couple of times in order to make sure for us that this is the, the perfect shape for the for the actual project. Um, in a sense of technical technology, in, in software technology is like that. In a sense of um, technology inside of the studio as a work process, uh, it's the same thing always um, in order to um achieve and to um, follow our um, way of doing things our own language we always put our, our, our ideas to the test uh, until the very end and if we are sure a certain shape a certain design a certain volume um then we again try to put it in a test and it's always uh, a teamwork um and we are very um, trying to be perfectionist uh, when we use um, to simplify our line. This is our way of uh, process while we reach the design. Um, I hope here, I answered. Thank you. Um, so there's a question. Uh, could you please share the indicative cost per square meter for a flat standard facade panel? I didn't get the question. I think it's for Paco. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, I thought so. Yeah. Uh, well, it's it's uh, very difficult to say. Um, that's often a question we get from our colleagues in the sales department, and we don't like these kind of questions. I'll tell you why. Because any single project is very different from from one another. Okay. My experience tells me that finished price, so. Um, uh, the, 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 including the cladding, um, but also the installation and the um, um, uh, supporting structure, et cetera. Uh, minimum price I've seen, minimum prices I've seen is around 230 euros, which is like uh, 260, 270 per square meter. Okay. But there are lots of factors who have an influence, who play a role in the cost per square meter how easy it is to access the, the site. Uh, where do you fabricate the sheet? The sheet? Uh, it's just a matter of cutting panels and put them, uh, putting them up in the, um, uh, in the facade, in the building, or they need a lot of fabrication. So there are lots of things who, um, who have an influence in there. It's very difficult to tell a price. So let's say that an indicative starting price would be around that. All right, um, another question for Paco. Uh, all three designs were white or gray. Uh, would color also be suitable for facade use? Yes. Um, yes, but we don't really recommend using all of the colors in our color range. We have like 100 colors, okay? We recommend the use of certain colors because of its uh, better uh, performance in terms of UV stability. We provide a 10-year warranty on color fading for facades, okay? Um, a red, for instance, we cannot give this kind of warranty on red uh, because it's gonna fade more than what we guarantee, okay? So we, I mean, you could use, one could use any color, uh, would recommend to go for colors that have a better uh, UV performance. White is the best uh, performer in terms of UV resistance, for instance. Okay. 
like in 20 years time, uh, we could expect a, a, a Delta, Delta 5 EAB in terms of color change, which is really minimal for 20 years. For all the colors, this color fading may, may, uh, may happen earlier, okay? So yeah, we could basically use any color in our, in our range for external cladings, but we would prefer to limit that to uh, the best performance in terms of um, UV stability. Um, someone would like to, uh, would you explain the thermal expansion of Corian um, and how that's managed with connection detailing and seam dimensions? That uh, could be easy and difficult, actually. Uh, let's say the easy. Let's say the easy way. Uh, we always consider an expansion of uh, three millimeters per linear meter. Okay, any direction. Okay, so that that's why we need expansion gaps from sheet from one panel to another panel. Okay, size of this gap would depend on the size of the panel. In reality, uh, how do we? Yeah, this is one of the limiting factors in terms of the size of the panel sometimes in projects uh, because of the uh, because the limit actually of the feasibility of the project comes more from the uh, background structure, supporting structure than from the cladding itself. okay If we had a system which would make the Korean, the Korean float, well, maybe that's going to come in 20 years, right? Um, but if you want to mechanically fix fix it to the building, okay, this is really the limitation. So depending on the uh, hanging system, there we would have more limitations on the side of the panels or less. Um, someone is asking about the if it's possible for Corian to be recycled. Um, yes. Yes, but it's not the, uh, it's probably not the best way um, to make it a, um, a sustainable product. I'll tell you why, because we have to strip it and bring it back to our factories. And our factories are in every corner of the world. So depending on the part of the world where the question comes from, that might be, a, I mean, a bit far away um, from an environmental point of view. I doubt whether uh, we doubt whether that's going to make uh, I mean it's going to make sense or not. Korean can be reused and and recycled. Uh, I mean it can be reused um, just by sanding it. You will get your surface clean as new, literally, uh, so you can use it for many other applications. And then um, I think we have time for one last question. Uh, Someone asked um, for Filippo, uh, when does the technology Corian start influencing the project? Um, do you know what, sorry, do you know what you can use and its possibilities when you start, such as for the Napoli train station? Um, sorry, this particular technology that we've seen. Um, it, yeah, when does the technology with Corian start influencing the project? Ah, uh, okay, yeah, yeah, of course. Well, mm, no, I have to say that we were exploring that uh, that uh, very shape since the beginning. That was really, I mean, part of our uh, of our overall initial idea, and uh, we've been looking after for the for the right material to to implement it uh, we didn't we didn't shape the the building directly on the on the construction technology as we've done uh, as we've done um, normally in the most of our projects because we believe that uh, innovation is always uh, Let's say the range of innovation is uh, always wider when it's not specifically goal directed, so that there are a number of unexpected opportunity for unpredictable uh, aspects of the project that can be um, discovered along the way and uh, and open the way to streams of innovation that are not invisible at the, at the beginning if you if you 
if you proceed towards a specific goal. If this was clear enough. Thank you. Um, so that's all for today. Um, our conversation will be available to rewatch on both Design Boom and on Arc Daily shortly. Um, in the meantime, I'd like to personally thank uh, each of our experts for adding their own professional perspective on the future of facade design. Um, for those interested in finding out more about the case studies, um, as well as other projects by our participants today, their work can be found on Design Boom as well as on Arc Daily. Uh, more information into Corian Design, their products like Solid Surface and the upcoming digital fabrication technology and services can also be found on both platforms. Um, we hope you enjoyed this talk and stay tuned for our next in the three-part webinar series focusing on healthcare.